So today on Perspectives with Awesome as Silva and Awesome as always, here we are, ready to talk to somebody interesting in the world. This is this is something where uh, we're going to be speaking with Lady J. Now I, I I love that, so we'll be a little you know a little right. less formal today. I'll take off my jacket at some point during the uh, during the <laughs> interview. But running for Senate in Virginia, Virginia, and I think that you know part of this is that I'm curious about is we are seeing so many women candidates. And you, of course, have had over the course of the last year a number of women candidates who are also Muslim women right. candidates, which is something that is happening here in the United States that I think is something that we haven't seen very much in the past. So very interested to have our conversation today with Lady J. Right. Thank you so much for joining us today, Lady J. And as I just want our viewers to know that your formal name is Jasmine Mawad. Uh, but known as Lady J because we want a casual conversation with you, so we're going to go with you, go by the name that most people call you by. Um, but just to introduce yourself, and well, before I actually ask you a question, I want to just set the stage of how I met uh, Lady J. Mm. Uh, I was actually in D.C. for a conference for meetings, and I couldn't get into the building. And what happened was um, the the person who was leading the meeting texted me and said, "Keep an eye out for the lady in red." She, and, and she'll be the one who um, brings, uh, brings you into the building. And I just chuckled because it just sounded like a blind date of some <laughs> sort. And I was looking at every woman that was coming by looking for that red dress. Wearing a carnation, holding an umbrella, umbrella whatever Exactly. Else it, it may and be. that's how I met her. And we started talking um, in these meetings. Um, so, Lady J, if you'd like to introduce yourself, what is it that uh, is... What is it that you're running for? What are you standing for? And why, first of all, before anything, motivated you to run for this office? Thank you so much. I'm very pleased and happy to be with you guys today. And yes, my uh, name, my complete name is Jasmine Mawad Barriento. So I'm the first Latina Muslim that is running for Virginia Senate. And I will say that probably, uh, if this is not going to stop here, we have plans also to eventually run for governor. Um, my passion is advocacy. Um, my specialty is civil rights and uh, human rights. I understand very well now that we are citizens of the world and that we should have a more comprehensive uh, understanding of the civil laws, human rights. Uh, my practice mostly is um, I had experience in working at, with international laws in the Supreme Court when I was in Brazil, when, when I was in the uh, third world countries that we can call, and I was working uh, with uh, women that they were uh, suffering the uh, struggle of not just domestic violence, but some of them were transgenders, and they were discriminated, they were beaten, and they were actually uh, end up deciding the, the hard choice to even kill themselves. So after that, I come back here, uh, from that, that I'm telling you just like the recent work that I've been doing. Um, because I've been working in advocacy for the past 10 years, but this is just recent, like the past two years. I come back here and I start uh, working for the government. And we start working in a, in a, in a, it's called the Immigrant Integration Department. It's a project. And um, we, after that, we start um, also helping people that they were going through a bullying and working with what it is, the, the bullying and prevention uh, and then suicidal prevention with middle schoolers. And that when really put me in place with what I'm really um, uh, very tender and, and, and it really hurts me when I see a teen that is being uh, hurt. We all heard about the news uh, of the shooting of those uh, 19 kids in Florida. I mean 17, 14 kids and, and the rest were adults, but um, I have a representative, a senator that is actually my opponent, that uh, called the, the shooter as a clown. And uh, coming from a part in which I actually help kids of bullying, and I see in middle school and high school sometimes the extreme of bullying, what can do to the mind of a teen, I really think that this term is bad. It's bad for a child that I understand he he um, commit a crime. I understand that, but I also under and we have to be able to understand where he's coming from and what was happening with him for the moment that he decided to shoot another kid in the high school. 
Um, doesn't mean I'm condone it, but I definitely I um, there's more things underlying. People is talking about gaming, is talking about bullying. Um, I honestly think that there's a lot of bullying that doesn't come only for schools. I see also in parents, in many parents, the parenting uh, and, and and sometimes like uh, situations that makes the stress of parents go for actually bullying their own kids. Uh, so I was helping the, suicide, the suicidal prevention. I got actually uh, an award for a year of service by the superintendent of education. And that pushed me to start uh, doing public speaking for Islamophobia prevention techniques and Sharia laws. This happened at a time where there was two girls with uh, we were wearing hijabs and they were you know pulled with a with a hijab and I don't know if you guys remember this situation in which uh, they were sitting in a, in a bus and then three brave men end up fighting and two of them die. And that pushed me to start um, like a campaign for uh, Islamophobia prevention, giving the most of the information to the people that they believe uh, Islam, they see Islam as uh, connected with the terrorism, which is absolutely untrue. And um, we started all also giving Islamophobia prevention techniques for actually women and people that instead of fighting with someone that is already angry, we should de-escalate the situation so we can save our lives. And uh, it went very well. I was invited to uh, to the Arkansas Bar Association and uh, I was very proud and happy. However, we were having KKK outside at the door protesting. So that's one of the things that I've been through uh, that we're talking about June last year, uh, where we have KKK outside uh, very uh, upset about the Islamophobia prevention. There were also people talking about transgender laws and Sharia laws. Um, that's one part of it. Um, we have also the help that we had at the Dallas airport when the ban started on February, and and we have we have to help a lot of people along the Attorney General. Uh, to actually come back to their country because this is their country. I believe we all are immigrants, um, but it's, it's been told that newcomers are never too welcome. So uh, the newcomers is actually the ones that are struggling here, but we all are immigrants unless you're a Native American, um, which this is your land, um, the ones that are sitting most of the time at the reservations. But uh, that's a little bit of what I'm doing, and, and eventually I start taking, um, I was invited for uh, the Pluralism Project, and this is a project by Harvard University, in which actually combine not just the, um, what's the religion, but also combine uh, the different backgrounds and races, and, and they teach you to understand and, and get tolerant and um, be able to to have a uh, more effective campaign when when you actually embrace different religions, respect different religions, that comes with the background and the race and the color and sometimes even the accent. So um, that's why it was one of the parts that I've been uh, doing lately and um, I'm a political writer too. I helped to turn um, blue Virginia the last election in November we got a new governor, which was, uh, which is a Democrat, uh, Ralph Northam, and I'm so proud to say that uh, my political writing uh, was helping many Virginians to decide to actually go for blue. So that. I think a little bit of me. A little bit. Boy, there is a so much uh, There's so much there <laughs> in just that, that little bit that you have been involved in. I guess I'll take the, uh, the, the part about the Florida shooting, which is so tragic and so much in the news right now. And I will say this. I think that you have taken a position or have begun to speak about something that I'm not sure that most Americans want to hear right now, that there was perhaps bullying, that there can be some type or any room for compassion for the 19-year-old who actually did the shooting. So as a politician, I think the fact that you are willing to take on or say something that might not be popular or might not, if we were to do some polling, be where most people are in America right now, says something uh, about you and the way that you have, as you talked about the other things that you have done, the way that you have conducted uh, your life and what you are interested in. Having said that, do you feel from your comments that the conversation that we're having in America right now about gun control. I think these young people from 
Parkland, Florida have been amazing in doing something I didn't think was possible, actually advancing and actually making America have a conversation perhaps about, about gun control. But do you think that's the wrong conversation? Uh, in the wake of these shootings, should we be talking about other things? Should we be focusing on bullying? Should we be focusing on what some of the triggers are? Because we seem to go to our script of, they're coming to take my guns away. We should, you know, we should have a conversation about the Second Amendment. Is it the right conversation we're having? Right. Um, it's uh very important to know that it's different areas that we have to tackle when we talk about uh, a shooting in a high school. We need to understand there's different homicide situations in which there's adults involved and then there's children involved. So when we're talking about when children are involved, it's not just gun control. I am very much into the advocacy. Of course, we need gun control, but I'm also very involved with what has to be happening in Virginia. Um, which I am, you know, part of it in my district. Um, we need counseling. We need counselors in the schools. Right now, we have one counselor for every 500 students. That means I have situations in which I had uh, a girl who was being uh, child molested at home, and we have to put it on a waiting list for a week or two, just because there was not enough uh, space for the counselor. So we're talking about situations in which some kids can be prevented. I also have the opportunity to talk to the mother of the Columbus shooter. And the mother of the Columbus shooter was a, uh, a lady who actually was the, the, the witness. And she felt very, very guilty about uh, the situation that her son uh, killed also in Columbus 20 year, almost 19 years ago, killed so many kids. Uh, and she always wondered what was happening. And um, we, we both coincide that it was not just the, the, uh, the repeal of the guns, the control of the guns, but also it was very important what's happening with the behavior of many kids that needs an immediate attention. And it, it, the only way to do that is in the school, because remember, our kids spend at least six hours or more in the schools, and the teachers are the ones that can tell us even sometimes more than a parent that is working two, three jobs right now to keep up with the family. So if the school is not able to, to notice um, what's going on with the kid, at least a kid can, ha can have the opportunity to go to a counselor and be able to tell them, this is happening with me. And, and these teachers, which are counselors, they have the opportunity also to uh, be able to ease them. I, I talk to people who were actually in jail and they being uh, part of what there was uh, the bullying when they were children, and they said to me, "I was bullied, and I have to become the biggest bully." And I had opportunity to, to talk to a counselor, and sometimes she was escalating the uh, situations. Obviously, many of these people told me, "If I was having a gun by my reach, I was shooting people," which means yes, we need gun control. Uh, but also, we need to see what's the underlying factors. What's really the root of what's happening here? When we specifically talk about high school shootings, school shootings, it's not it's not the same that when we talk uh, a person, an adult that is shooting another person, committing a homicide. So uh, obviously, you have a lot of experience in the political arena. Um, you are an attorney. You've done a lot of bullying cases, as you've just said, and worked in advocacy. Uh, what was other than your experience? What was that one incident that motivated you to want to run for this office? Uh, there is a situation that is very sad uh, that not every parent should go for it, and that I was a witness of it and also part of it. In 2014, I was um, in Maryland. For, for you guys that uh, don't know very much the area, it's very close to Virginia. I was dropping um, my son. Um, I was dropping, actually, I'm sorry, a little kid, a little girl. It was a birthday. We were coming with my three kids from Jack and Chicks. We were coming back uh, from a birthday party, so I have my new, my firstborn. He was 14 by then, and I have another of my two kids plus the little girl. And we're dropping, and we're late. The little girl didn't want to leave the place. She was excited in Jack and Chicks, so she didn't want to leave the place. 
we are late, we explained to the mother, and the mother was very uh, mad, very upset. And she found a friend of her that I never met in my life, and he was waiting at the door for us. And this man was like at least six feet tall and like 300 pounds, a very tall man and very scary. Uh, when I reached out the place, uh, he started asking me to apologize to the lady. I felt at that moment that I was feeling less and humiliated. There was no need for do such thing. And I told them, I explained it, and, and this is uh, not really my obligation to drop a little girl. We are doing this to, to make the girl, because we love the girl, we want to make it have fun. Uh, they didn't see it that way. They see it actually as being a person that it was not punctual on her time. But to make the story short, the guys, the, this man will start saying to me, his name is Gerald Rogero. He starts saying to me, uh, apologize, you have to apologize, and corner, kind of corner me. My son came on my defense, the 14-year-old kid who is tall, but he was still 14. And he said to him in the middle, he put himself in the middle, and he said, you know, as Muslim women, we, and I think any woman, uh, their son will go and, and, and be brave. So his act of bravery will cost them almost his life. Because what happened after that is the most bizarre, horrible thing that a mother can face. He was shoveled uh, to the street. He shoveled him to the street, make him flu, and not happy with that, ran to him, strangulated him, broke his um, wrist, kicked his back, make his kidney bleed. And while my son was on the floor, he pulled out his gun and he said, I don't want to say the right word here because we are on TV, but he said, F Mexicans, why you guys don't go home? And uh, while I was crying and begging for his life because he had a gun pointed, you know, the gun was pointed at the head of my son, I started thinking that no woman should go through this humiliation, no parent should go through this humiliation. But the worst thing of this, until here you think this is a stranger. But when the police arrived, he pulled up his badge and said, I'm an FBI supervisor, and these people was very disruptive. And I can make arrest you, and I will make an arrest him. That's the moment I said, we need, we need justice. We need um, a immigration reform at that time. But also I started thinking about what else we need as a vulnerable community, that are, there is people that absolutely hate us, and, and they have, I am strongly believe that that's not the whole uh, rest of the people here in the United States. They embrace us very much and, and they love us, but I'm sure that there's some people that they don't like my accent or they don't like that I'm running for office because I'm a woman uh, and I'm a, I'm a woman of color and, uh, and furthermore, I'm a Muslim woman. I'm sure there's people that, are, that this is not a great idea for them because I look for uh, equality and not just, and I also look for equity, not just that one fits for all. Uh, so after that, we put this person behind bars for two years. Uh, but that's when I, that will come to me for a judicial reform, because the judge, um, because he fainted in the when the jury trial found them guilty, he fainted, so he was taken out in a rush. When we come back for the second hearing, um, which was actually to given the judgment, the judge changed his mind and revoked the whole jury trial and actually put it on probation only and let him keep his gun. But I didn't stop there. I started a lawsuit again at the federal court uh, because it's not just it's not just for what happened to my son who lost a whole year of school because of the trauma. And it's not just that my daughter cannot look at the windows because she's always thinking that Gerald Rogero can come home and shoot her. It's not just that. It is the injustice that sometimes happens to people who doesn't know, to people that sometimes are not part of the system because they are coming from a different country and don't understand the regulations, laws, and, and I'm sure this man was not just doing this to me. He seems very comfortable of doing this. I'm sure that he was very abusive during the years of his service with the FBI. Um, so I didn't stop there. We're still having a lawsuit right now that is going on. And if I cannot stop, I can, I can do exactly the same thing for the rest of the people in Virginia. 
I'm a very determined person, uh, but I'm also a very, uh, very protective um, woman that has, is being raising her kids as a single mother for the past five years without even a child support and knows very well what it is to be a person that is going through uh, these situations in which, for example, needs uh, maybe food stamps because he cannot do it no more, or maybe cannot even afford a lawyer for her divorce. I know all that stuff, and that's why I am a very good candidate. Because when the rules going to be passing, when the legislation is going to be in place, when there's a bill that we have to sponsor, I'm going to put in place all my real experiences. And this will be the measure for my decisions. And it's obviously going to be always in favor of the most vulnerable. Yeah. Wow. Uh, what, a no, what, a, what, what a story. What a story. Talk in, about indeed. motivation. Yeah. You know, I mean, on the one hand, we live in a country in which a Latino Muslim woman can run for the, for the Senate. And so that would seem to say that we have come a long way. On the other, the story that you just told us that helped motivate you to run to fight the injustice that we have in America shows that there's a lot of things still going on in this, this country that a, a lot of us, quite frankly, probably think because of our everyday lives aren't going on. I don't face, obviously, the kinds of things that, 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 that you face. Do you think that if you are elected that we can have some of these conversations in America about immigration, that we can stop some of this deadlock, uh, some of this partisanship that is happening. The whole, I mean, Congress just seems to be broken. There just doesn't seem to be any way to move us forward. What's happening is that the, the Republican Party is, is offering options for the Congress that are really out of sense, and they are uh, pretty much dismembering families. And the other side, which is the Democratic Party, is fighting for not dismemberment of families, not breaking apart mothers from kids. And, and that's why you will see this kind of lot. Uh, if Republicans were more sensible, they were more um, also aware of a family and not see uh, immigration as, a, as, an, as an issue, but qualify and divide the immigrants. Because, you know, I... As, as a candidate, I've been studying uh, through, for example, mo my, my, the Migration Policy Institute that gives you very good statistics of what kind of immigrants come here who actually only come for trading work and they don't even care to be part of the, uh, to be included as citizens. And there's another part that is being sitting here for many years that really feel they're part of America and they want to be citizens and they want to find a path of citizenship. And uh, many people says about, for example, TPS that is being going to be cut up. They said, why this this person didn't uh, put their paperwork on, on, on you know, it's, even Congress people I've been talking, they were like, why an immigrant, an immigrant was not able to adjust their status and get his citizenship on over these 15 or 20 years? So they don't understand very well the laws. It's not easy to become a citizen. And now it's getting even harder. But there's also two types of immigrants. The immigrants that they just trade, uh, they work for money, and they don't want to stay here. And there's another immigrants that are staying very long here. They have kids here, and they should get the opportunity to become part of this country and being citizens and, and, and then be able to integrate themselves with their kids or sometimes themselves only uh, and, and uh, their labor that actually I, I believe we bring values to our society and I embrace our country because our country is number one just because it's always been welcoming newcomers. So with your so, with your candidacy, where are you finding support? Which organizations, uh, which groups are supporting your candidacy? Well, I believe that um, we were together uh, last Saturday in, in actually Virginia and I find the Muslim caucuses of America is supporting me very well. I also have the groups like CASA, that is a nonprofit that has been helping me. Uh, CCA, which is a community for change in action, uh, it's been helping me. And I also have like pretty much everybody uh, that I talk to are very happy to support me. And uh, once they know me, they know my story, they know my principles, my values, they really understand that this is going to be actually in the benefit of many people and everyone. I am not here to divide. I'm here 
here to unify. And I always say that, and I said that joke at the Muslim caucuses. I said, if my father, who was Muslim, and my mother, who was Catholic, they were able to get along, I think we all can do that. The image froze a little bit there at the end, but the words were so important. We have 30 seconds. seconds. Awesome. Well, today's show, I think, was extremely interesting, um, not only with so many issues that we covered um, on this candidacy uh, regarding gun control, immigration, being a Muslim woman, Islamophobia, bullying. I, I think those are the hot topics that we've been, we've been, this country has been struggling with in the last few months. So I encourage um, every single person uh, there are a lot of women running, there are a lot of Muslim women running, uh, and just go online and find them and look at what they're standing for and what they are advocating for. And thank you so much for joining Perspectives, and please join us again next week.